Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to explore the 147 grain ELDM with Alliance Reloader 26. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you'll get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Well guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be stepping a little bit off the reservation as we won't have any published data to help with our load test today. Now if you guys aren't familiar, Alliance Reloader 26 is a little bit on the slower side for 6.5 Creedmoor. Lo, if you've been watching the channel a while, you might know that it's one of my favorite powders that I use with the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter. In fact, that is exactly what I use for my hunting load. We've done an awful lot of work on the channel with this 147 grain ELDM with lots of different powders, but Reloader 26 has not been one of those for the basic reason of not actually having any load data to use. I've seen in several forums people talking about using Alliance Reloader 26 with this 147 grain ELDM, but until now I had no means to generate any load data. But since I've picked up Quick Load and have been playing around with it a little bit, based on listening to other people's experiences and having the tool to actually generate some reasonable pressure estimations, I thought we'd do a little load test today, seeing what we could find. Our test platform for today is the Generation 1 Ruger Precision Rifle, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. It does have the factory brake, it has a Magpul PRS stock, and is wearing a Vortex PST scope. And just in case you're wondering, the scope is being held down with Vortex PMR rings. Just for safety's sake, I can't certainly recommend any of the data we're going to discuss today, but this is how my testing turned out for today. The brass we're going to be using for today's testing is Norma. I believe this to actually be the third loading for this brass. And all the usual brass prep has been done, full length sizing, pushing the shoulder back two thousandths, trimming to 1.910 inches, annealing, all that fun stuff has been accomplished, so our brass will be as consistent as possible. Not having a published load data go by, we're going to be a little bit more conservative today. Using our Norma case volume of 52.9 grains of water, been putting all of our information for our rifle into quick load, we're going to be estimating our highest charge today at 47 grains. At our max charge of 47 grains, quick load will be estimating at 2789 feet per second, but only hitting 53,639 PSI. Almost 10,000 PSI under the 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge's max pressure rating. As we've been talking about barrel times lately, I will tell you that at that velocity, it's estimating our barrel time at 1.276 milliseconds. Certainly not on a node, but Hopefully we're going to be at least running over one or two today. Making sure we want to start at some place safe, we're going to be actually backing down. We've got 25 cases we'll be using today, and we're going to be backing down from 47 grains in 0.2 grain increments. So we're actually going to be backing all the way down to our starting charge of 42.2 grains. Assuming 47 grains with a 101.5% fill rate, so we are going to a compressed charge. Typically backing off 10% is not an unreasonable thing to do. 10% of 47 grains is 4.7, so we're backing down almost exactly 10%. At that load of 42.2 grains, quick load is going to be estimating our velocity at 2480 feet per second and only 37,091 PSI. The fill rate is only 91% of the case, but quick load does estimate we'll still be burning 98% of our powder. So making sure we've got all our data in place, we'll just say our bullet today is obviously the Hornady 147 grain ELDM, part number 26333. This is one of the highest ballistic coefficient projectiles that you can get, though hopefully we'll have some more testing coming down the road on something maybe a little bit higher. Since more than anything we were just looking for pressure signs and not necessarily consistency among loading, we're just using some of our Federal 210s. These really haven't been my favorite primers to do testing with. For today's testing, we're just trying to look for pressure and see whether or not we have some safe loads to test, should we decide to work on this powder combination further. Like I said, the Lions Reloader 26 will be our powder, starting at 42.2 grains, working up in 0.2 grain increments, all the way to our max charge of 47.0 grains. The cartridge overall length, I'm sure, will be a topic of interesting discussion. The cartridge overall length we're going through is 2.870 inches. That puts us at a CBTO of 2.23 inches. A possible point of interest to anyone who's been watching this channel for a while, this rifle's getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 rounds on it, give or take a little bit. I haven't done a round count on it lately. With some of the testing I've been doing, I have been wondering exactly how much barrel life might actually be left in here. And today's testing is going to be one more of those pieces of data. Being able to run this load in a magazine is one of the goals that I typically would put. And my AICS magazines for this rifle can handle a cartridge overall length of 2.880 inches. However, making sure they're all functional is why we back this off to 2.870 inches. At least when we first started loading, the CBTO to the lands at that time was 2.264 inches, so we were basically somewhere around 35 thousandths off the lands. 
and having a significant more rounds to the barrel at this point. I wanted to make sure I had an accurate distance to the lands for today's video and actually have found out that our distance to the lands has increased by almost 43 thousandths. Our actual distance to the lands now is 77 thousandths. So actually more than double when we started testing. That all the way, let's go to the range, see how it shoots, and then we'll come back and talk about our loads. Welcome back. I hope you found the range footage interesting. Let's get into our data. We'll put our velocity graph on the screen. You can see starting down at 42.2 grains, our estimated velocity was 2480 feet per second. We actually started at 2447 feet per second. Creeping all the way up to 47 grains, our estimated velocity was supposed to be 2789. Came in at a very close 2770 feet per second. Even though we didn't have any published data, QuickLoad gave us some very good information to start with and honestly has been pretty accurate. In some of our recent videos, we've been talking more about our quick load data. So let's put some more data on the screen just in case you're interested. Looking at possible accuracy nodes to explore, at node 7's barrel time, our 1.436 millisecond barrel time would have been somewhere around 43.7 grains of alliance for loader 26, only 41,538 psi at that load, and an estimated velocity of 2577 feet per second. At 2577, we didn't see a very nice plateau in that area. Not sure that's some place we really want to explore. Certainly nothing saying we can't. We'll move on up. Our node six barrel time, which theoretically be 1.3084 milliseconds. A quick load estimating 1.309 was the closest I could get it to estimate to. Would have been at 46.3 grains of alliance for loader 26 at 50,765 PSI and an estimated velocity of 2744 feet per second. Now you might see at actual 46.3 grains, we weren't quite at that 2744 feet per second load, but there is a little bit of a node just above that at 2745. If you look at 46.6 and our 46.8 grain load, seems to be a bit of a plateau right in there. So if we work this up a little bit further, that might be some place we'd like to look. If you guys are really interested, the overall group size for our testing today, keep in mind that was 25 rounds, but a 1.783 MOA group. That size, group size, keep in mind our extreme spread was 323 feet per second from top to bottom, not exactly a small window. But if you've been watching some of our testing lately, we had a workup with our six Creedmoor, where we shot 20 rounds into a three quarter MOA group. And I know with our 338 Lapua Magnum, we were able to shoot one of our its velocity strings into a, a hole that was just under one MOA. So I certainly would have liked to have seen better. As you guys remember, we talked about the distance to the lands. Up to this point, my favorite load with this 147 green ELDM has been Reloader 16. With that powder and bullet combination, we were able to get groups somewhere around the three quarters of an MOA as well as run velocities all the way up to about 2760 feet per second. Looking at today's data, I do think it's realistic we're going to be hit that. But however, we'll talk, since we've actually talked about the pressure estimates, let's take a look at the brass and see what we think about the cases. Put it on your screen. We'll start at the 42.2 and work our way up to the 47 grains. 
as what we probably could have assumed with looking at our quick load pressures, there's really nothing to see here. There's really no significant pressure signs whatsoever. Not even getting to 54,000 PSI, still a lot of pressure to go. No real pressure signs on the brass whatsoever. I'm sure if we kept shooting loads this cool that our brass would last a very long time. So guys, I'd like to know what you think in the comment section below. Seeing as quick load seems to be right on the money here as far as velocity is concerned, and we really don't have any pressure signs in the brass, I'm really interested to see how far we can really push reloader 26. Be very interested to see if we actually loaded a few more of these a little bit higher, what actual velocity we could achieve, maybe even see if we could work our way up to that next barrel node and actually still stay within safe pressures. Even if you're not reloading for 6.5 creamer, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comment section below. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I don't know what you're waiting for, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.